Hello everyone, it's Sky here and welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel if you're new. Today we are going to be recording what was supposed to be our May color along but I ended up feeling a little under the weather and had a little case of the blues so I focused a little bit more on my mental health and my family and stuff so I kind of took I guess April off and then the majority of May from YouTube to kind of focus on that stuff. So I'm back now to record our now June color along. We're going to be working in Kirby Roseanne's Mythomorphia and the page that was chosen, I believe, was chosen by our YouTube members. Yes, so the page was voted on by my Clouds, Moons, and Rainbows and I'm pretty excited for the page they chose. It was one that I was hoping. There was, I think, three out of four that I was totally okay with coloring and one that I just kind of want to get done. So they picked probably like my favorite and like the most intimidating one, of course, because that's what y'all usually do. So we are going to be using some watercolors in this. If you don't have watercolors, you can use Derwent Ink Tents if you have those. You can use Neo Colors if you have those. Um, or you could even use pencils and just try and use the same colors. It'll just be a little bit tricky. Um, I want to get this watercolor look on this page, so that's why we're going to use watercolors. Um, and also, mostly just because I love using the watercolors in this book specifically, because it just takes it so well. Um, I think these ones were acrylic paints. This one was watercolor, so you can see that it does look really good. It did not bleed through aside from this one small part, but I think because I had it a little bit too wet when I was working on it, I wasn't being careful. Um, acrylic paint. That one's acrylic paint. This one was watercolor. This one was so much fun. I loved this one. Another one we used watercolor in. This was actually a color along. It is one of my favorites so far in this book. I love that page. And let's see, this one was acrylic paint. Those are all the pages I have done in here. The page that we are going to be coloring today is the Baku. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, it's this guy here. So I am really excited to color him. It'll be interesting. I'm a little bit intimidated, not going to lie. Just a little bit, but I think it'll be fun. So I'm going to use the Kuretake Gansai Tambi watercolors. I have the 36 set. This is a watercolor set I would highly recommend. I feel like it is still a budget set because it's not too bad. Um, in price and that's why I got it. I'm a little bit cheap when it comes to stuff. I feel like the 36 set is perfect. I don't feel like I've ever needed more than this set when I've used it. Um, and then the beautiful thing about watercolors is you can mix them and get so many other unique colors that I really don't think that you would need anything other than this set. I just want to see what they're retailing for. Okay, so they're actually a little bit more than I thought they were. So they retail for about $70 Canadian. So Canadian is one of the expensive dollars. So for almost everybody else, it'll be a little bit cheaper than that. So yeah, we're gonna use these. So I went through the other day and I made swatches for the watercolors because last time it was a little bit of a nightmare trying to remember what colors I was using. The only bad thing about watercolors is I'm gonna be constantly switching back and forth between them. So. It is kind of a nuisance in that sense, but the result that we get from them is so worth it in my opinion. Let's see, we need a piece of paper to put in behind this, something relatively large. Let's see what I have. All right, I'm just gonna use one of these large sheets of pattern paper that I have. You can use um, just normal paper, a couple pieces of those, maybe tape them together so that way they stay together kind of thing. Okay, so Almost everything I've colored in this book I've kind of known about. This one I wasn't sure, so I just looked it up and it says Bakus are Japanese supernatural beings that are said to devour nightmares. So that's really interesting. According to legend, they were created by the spare pieces that were left over when the gods finished creating all other animals. Okay, so I have a couple paint brushes, um, just like a small detailer, um, a flat brush, and then a round. You can use whatever brushes you have. Um, I have a paper towel for cleaning my brushes on, some water for cleaning my brushes on, and a little spray bottle for activating my watercolors. You can just use a little bit of water on your brush and do it that way though. So 
So in order to make it so he doesn't fully blend in with the background, we're just gonna have to make sure that kind of like around him is dark. So that way he stands out from the background. So even though there's a possibility that it will be similar colors, he will still be our focal point. So that is the goal there. Okay, I think we're set up. I think this will be the easiest way to do it for you guys. That way I don't have to constantly switch back between the watercolor swatches because we are going to be mixing quite a bit. So it's really tedious to do that. Um, and I would also worry that I would forget to change the swatch and then, you know, mess you guys up. So I think having it laid out this way uh, should work good. So I just have the plastic kind of um, mixing thing that comes with the set. I have my swatches set out here and the corresponding colors beside it. So you guys will be able to visually see which pots I'm grabbing from. All right, got a sip of coffee and let's get started. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a spray in each of my containers just to start activating that watercolor. I'm gonna start off with my round brush. I think the first thing that I wanna do is let's figure out Let's figure out where our highlights are going to be. I'm just going to grab a little bit of the bright yellow. Okay, so definitely in here. I mean, we can go over the stars too with the bright yellow. We don't have to worry about that because they'll probably be yellow or white anyways, so. Don't know how far in we want to bring the, the bright yellow. We might not even need the light brown. It actually doesn't look too bad. Let's say kind of like that, maybe. Um, Yeah, this is definitely would be easier if I had all of this set up on the other side, but I don't want to get anything on him. So that's where my problem is. That's why I'm like reaching back and forth. I realistically, I probably should just bring the water over here, but it feels wrong. We might be, we might have to try because I'm, I'm just not sure. Um, okay, let's carry the yellow over to this side a little bit. Let's do a little bit of yellow maybe coming into here. I mean, it'll be fairly dark around the Baku, but we'll leave some area for highlight anyways. I mean, if he's going to be like a greenish blue anyways, if we want to keep some yellow by him, that's not going to take away from him at all. Um, and because things are always better done in threes, I don't know if I want to do the moon yellow or white. Gray, I think maybe gray. But let's add a little bit of yellow over here. Okay, I like that. I feel like that's a good start. Um, let's see. Let's maybe go in with some of our deep violet. Yeah, this is ridiculous. As weird as it feels, I'm gonna move my stuff over to the side here. I 
gonna tap off some of the excess water. We don't want too much. Let's pick out some darker areas. Just going to keep kind of spreading the water. We don't want to let it sit anywhere for too long. Not like a big pool of it anyways. Little bits will be fine. Very carefully go over this with the blue. So we don't want the blue mixing in with the yellow. We're gonna, or sorry, we don't want the purple mixing in with the yellow. We're gonna want the blue. go into the cobalt blue here. This does not have to look neat at all. It is shading through a little bit though, so maybe I should have let that dry. Okay, let's kind of wet this area with the blue. Kind of coming out from the purple and then we're gonna grab a little bit of the purple and we're gonna mix this in with the blue. Way too wet right here. Okay, um, problems. Okay, we're switching up here. So it has bled through a little bit on the crack and my problem is, is I'm using too much water because I'm trying to blend these, but I don't use watercolors properly. I'm trying to right now and I think that's the issue. 
I usually use like really concentrated watercolor from the pigment. So for example, I'm going to pick up a little bit of this Persian blue. This is mostly just paint. It's hardly any water. It's really thick. It's probably more like gouache. I think that's the only reason I've gotten away with using watercolors in this book is because I use very little water. And they still blend nicely. A little tiny bit of water. Let's bring some of the bright yellow up here. We're gonna mix some of the pale aqua in with that. Get rid of any excess water on our brush. like this little tapping motion to kind of get the light aqua in over top of the yellow a little bit without completely eliminating it and then let's go into the Persian blue from here I think try to avoid the stars it's not gonna be the easiest thing to do I think this is working a little bit better So with a just damp brush, we're going to blend in from that. Yep, yeah, this, this is good. I think this is dry enough. Let's go in here again. Okay, clean off our brush, tap out any excess water, so it's just damp. We're going to go in and we are going to kind of fade out dark purple a little bit. Same thing, clean off our brush, tap out the water, fade it out from here a little bit more. You can use that little tapping motion to kind of make it appear a little bit more whimsical. bring the purple through a little bit over here too. I don't know so much that I like the bright yellow. Let's go in with the pale aqua. Just diffuse that. It's not bad. It gives us something to work with. Let's grab some of the cobalt blue for this cloud up here. Okay. 
don't want these drying out. Now that I added water though, I'm just gonna very carefully grab some water and then I'm just gonna work at a drier area on this because I don't wanna end up with too much water on my brush. But I want that nice, dark, concentrated color here. You can tell the difference already between the two. Okay, let's grab some of the pale aqua. Okay, I really like those colors together. That's pretty. Okay, for this, let's grab some of the deep blue. That's way too wet. I'm gonna bring this out past the purple because we ended up with like a really rough line with the purple that I don't really want to keep. And let's go from the deep blue in with the turquoise green, I think. Let's do some of the cobalt blue, maybe. And the pale aqua. From here, we're going in with a clean, damp brush. Let's just kind of work on blending these out a little bit. Let's go in with some of this light brown. I want to see what this kind of looks like. So I'm thinking like maybe in around here. Let's 
It's kind of a tough area to work in. I'm going to mix the light brown in with the, the lemon yellow that I had sitting there to kind of create a lighter tone of it. Though it doesn't really look like it changed much. That light yellow is not a very strong pigment. I don't think I like this color. I'm going to blot that up with some Kleenex there. Um, okay, so we'll leave this bottom corner alone for now. Probably work on this area. I've got a cat at the door, though, so come on. One sec. Never mind, I thought I did. All right, let's do deep blue here. Do some turquoise green. brush to kind of mix these together a little bit here and then we'll bring the turquoise green out a little bit further let's see from the turquoise green let's go into cobalt blue maybe Pale aqua. I think the key to this one is going to be making the background very dark, which is easy for me to do because I'm always forever adding way too much shadow to things. The 
yeah, if we have the background super dark, then sorry, this takes a lot of concentration. If we have the background super dark, and then we can have him fairly light, same colors though, he'd still look really pretty. I'm gonna keep going in with the uh, pale aqua. I'm just gonna use a touch more water though and kind of kind of work it in because I want to keep this light area, but I I don't know I just don't really like the yellow in here. Okay, let's grab the turquoise green. We'll add that in here. And then we'll put the pale aqua kind of between that and the turquoise green, and then we'll use a light, lightly watered brush to blend. Let's blend out into the light with like the darker colors. It's beautiful. It's ghosting through a little bit, but I think it's okay. I think as long as it ghosts, it's fine. As long as it doesn't fully bleed through, then we should be fine. Um, you can easily go over with um, the prismas. They're pretty. They're pretty opaque. I think they would go over that. I wouldn't, however, and I haven't tested this. I'm, I'm curious. I don't think I would use watercolor on the opposite page of a page I've already used watercolor because I wonder if it goes through if this watercolor will reactivate. Or not? I don't know. I would be curious to see, though. I actually really love that. That is beautiful. That's what I should have done here, but now that we have this light brown in there, I don't know if we can still do that. We can try. All right, let's keep going. So in with the deep violet, I think I've got way too much on my brush here. Let's do some of the deep violet here. We're going to have the deep violet come straight into the cobalt blue. Let's go into the Persian blue a little bit.
fill in some of the pale aqua. Let's grab a little bit of the cobalt blue just for this little piece right here. Hopefully you guys can see this is kind of like an awkward area right here. I gotta admit, I was not liking the direction that this was starting off in, but I'm I'm liking it a little bit more now. Probably quite a ways in though. I'd like to get at least one layer on the background. We might even spend two, like two whole videos on the background, which is understandable considering this is pretty much like all background, but. Okay. I think let's go in with the deep purple around him. I kind of want to make the moon glow, but uh, it's going to be kind of tricky to do. This kind of out in a few areas here. Let's keep this a little bit lighter. So let's go in with the Persian blue next. Kind of mix that in with the um, deep violet. Yeah, and light aqua. I don't know if I'll keep this light aqua. I might make that darker actually, just so it doesn't blend in with the background up there too much. But these areas down here will for sure be with the light aqua. Let's grab some of the Persian blue and mix that in with the light aqua here, maybe. I'm 
And then we'll go from that into turquoise green. So just a big blob of that and mix that in. want to overwork this area too much but I do think that we need to bring the dark purple in a little bit more I'm a little bit worried that that might have gone through, but it looks pretty, so there's that. aqua in here. Let's maybe try something different for this one. This might bite me in the butt, but let's put a big chunk of the light aqua here. Let's kind of work from light to dark maybe. I don't know if this will work. Maybe some of the cobalt blue here. Maybe come around this way. Don't think it's actually a good idea to do it this way because I'm going over the same spots quite a bit, whereas if we're working from the darkest to the lightest, we're only going over the dark spot once and working our way out. I think I'm just going to leave that one like that for now. Um, I think 
have a little bit of the deep violet for just in here. And I want this spot to be very dark, so I'm actually going to mix some of the deep blue in here as well. And I'm just going to carry that color over here. I'm going to go in with the turquoise green after that. Grab a little bit of the cobalt blue as well. We're going to sneak down here with the dark blue, deep blue. We're going to go in a little bit more with the cobalt turquoise here. You could put washi tape along the spine here to protect the other page. I'm just going to very carefully try not to color it. Okay, back in with the cobalt blue. Okay, that is beautiful. Okay, I think that's about all we'll do for um, basing. We're at about an hour now. There's a little bit of extra work I would like to do. I just want to touch up a few of these clouds here. Um, and that way it just makes it easier because otherwise, if we're working on the background for the next one, if we base everything, then the thumbnails can kind of get confusing. So I'd like to do just the top half in one and then the bottom half in the other. Just makes my life a little bit easier with that. So one of the clouds I want to touch up is this one. 
but we need to blend that deep violet out a little bit better. So we're going to add a little bit more in here. And then we're actually going to grab the turquoise greens and blend into that. Bring it up along this two to kind of divide those areas. Oh, put my hand in paint. Let's grab a little bit of the cobalt blue to mix into this. We'll use this to kind of bring it out a little bit. I don't know, I said cobalt blue, but that might have been the turquoise green, I'm not sure. I think it was the cobalt blue. Apologies if it wasn't. Like I said, that's why we have the pots here so you guys can see which colors I'm grabbing. Moving back and forth like this, it does get quite confusing. Um, let's grab a little bit of the Persian blue for up here. And I think I kind of want to keep that green tone. So let's just work at it with a damp brush and blend it out that way. I kind of want to see what damage we're doing here to the other page. Not bad at all. I'll show you guys when we're done the, the difference between working with the watercolor like this versus um, working with it more wet like we were doing first. There's definitely drawbacks to both too and we'll talk a little bit about that once we get a little bit past this point too. Um, I kind of like how this one looks. I don't think I want to mess with it too much. Let's go in with a little bit of the yellow here. Just going to blend this in. That actually brings it out quite nicely. So maybe that's what we'll use our lemon yellow for. Let's do the same thing here. It's still kind of wet, so it might not work the best. We'll see. Not bad. Yeah, that is beautiful. Let's take some of our cobalt blue and just I'm gonna water it down just a little bit here. I'm just gonna add some little dots. I like that. 
And if I don't get around to posting part one on the second, what I'll probably do is put one and two together because that'll be like the whole background. So that would make sense. Let's add a little bit of the deep violet here. Just a tiny little bit. I really don't want to mess too much with this cloud, but it just looks so bright compared to the others. I think we need to do something about that. Adding in some deep blue as well. Let's make it a little bit darker at the very corner, I think is what we'll do. So I'm gonna use the turquoise green to do that. There, that's better. So it's a little bit deeper, but we still have that really pretty watercolor effect there. I'm just gonna soften up the dots on this this cloud cluster here. And then let's see, in with the turquoise green here. just a little bit. A little bit in this little crevice too. So really you would think that the moon would be kind of like the highlight in the background, but we've kind of made it so the star is, and I'm, I'm not upset about that. I think it looks really pretty. Okay, so this one here needs a bit more color. I think my page is pretty heavy now. I can get rid of my butterfly cl clip. Let me make sure that we're in frame still. It would be good. I didn't zoom in, so I was going to say I would be very mad if we weren't. <laughs> okay, so this one needs a bit more color. Um, it's mostly blues. A little purple in there. I do think we need some yellow, but I want to add... Maybe just more of the Persian blue. Okay, deep 
violet. We'll add a little bit more of that here, just in the very corner. Maybe more of the deep violet coming out from this corner. Kind of blend that out a little bit. Okay, so Persian blue. aqua for sure Blend that in the best we can, and then let's add a little bit of the lemon yellow in here. That's beautiful. Actually, while we've got the lemon yellow, let's actually add a little bit in here too. I'm happy with this big one for the most part. I do want to maybe make it a little bit more blue. So I think I want to bring a little bit more of the cobalt blue in just to, into the purple to make the purple blend a little bit nicer. So I'm just going to blend that into there. some of the light aqua cobalt blue kind of coming into the swirly piece. I think I'm okay with those swirls. We'll make it darker back here and then we just have this one and this one to do and then we're done for now. So let's... We need more blues so let's use the deep blue for this one. coming in from here and then let's just color this whole area back here and with the deep blue maybe Maybe 
maybe some of the turquoise green. This is another cloud. I kind of want to keep this a little bit lighter. some of the cobalt blue Liking that, let's add our little bit of yellow tone to these. This is looking quite amazing, if I do say so myself. Do you want to add yellow in over here as well, especially right here. I feel like this one's going to be quite yellow. Okay, one second, get out the door. Come on. Hello. What are you doing? Let's grab a little bit of the turquoise green just because we've got like a few dots going in on the clouds over here. I feel like we need some on some of these clouds. So I think with this one, turquoise green is a good option. Once they dry, if they look too harsh, we can soften them up with just a little bit of water. Sporadic little clusters here and there. Okay, while we have the turquoise green, let's just bring it into here and bring it out. I don't think we need to darken this area up anymore, but definitely want to make it appear a little bit smoother. I do you want to darken up under this cloud though? And I don't want to go over this yellow bit too, with like too dark of a color. Okay. 
Let's just fade in with the turquoise green, and I'm just going to kind of make some speckles here. There we go. That's pretty. So you still have the yellow kind of peeking through, but it's kind of mottled. I think I'm pretty happy with that as a first and a second layer on the top. I don't think we'll really have to do much else with up here. Um... She says as she grabs her paintbrush. I do want to darken this spot up a little bit more though. I just I feel like this is just it's just too light. So I'm gonna use the deep blue to do that. And then I'm gonna take a nearly dry paintbrush and just try and blend it out just slightly. And that kind of helped the yellow on that stand out a little bit more too. And then since I've already got the deep blue, let's just make this darker, even though I said we weren't going to. There we go. I'm just going to add a little bit of the deep blue to this too. I don't know if we did before. I don't know if this is just purple or if we added some of the deep blue, but I want to add a little bit of it. I think that's good. I am extremely happy with how this is turning out. Hopefully you guys are too. I was a little bit nervous. It's kind of wet still, so I don't want to open it fully over on the other page. So this is what we have for bleeding and ghosting. It more just ghosts than blood through. There's like a little, tiny little bit of bleed through, but mostly ghosting up here. A little bit of yellow here, because that was too wet. And then right here is probably the biggest spot that went right through. But I would probably use acrylic paint for this background anyways. So I would still be totally fine. And that was actually on this one that we were just doing. So I just used a little too much water on that last little bit or went over it too many times. Either way is totally fine. Oh, I can't help myself, guys. I just can't help myself. This just looks funny. I don't like the purple going into the greens. It just... Or purple and yellow, it doesn't look good. We can use... Um, Posca pen, white Posca pen to create like little dots and sparkles here and there so we can kind of break it up with that. And that's how we'll fix that if it's still bugging us later but yeah i think this is a good stopping point for part one i'm really excited to carry on with part two in part two we will finish up the rest of the background but yeah that's everything for part one i hope you guys are enjoying so far i'm super happy to be back i've missed you guys i can't wait to see if any of you recreate this and what you come up with um yeah i think that's it as always you guys have a great day and I will see you next time. All right, guys. Bye.